Hello, hello, nice to have you with us. Um, this is why I love my producers, because I never even was aware of this National Financial Planning Week, which is to create awareness around financial planning. Uh, and that's why we have uh, engaged with Sean Latter, who's a wealth manager at Cuesta. He's also a 2012 Financial Planner of the Year finalist. And Paul Rulofsa, who is a consumer advocate at the Financial Planning Institute. Both Sean and Paul are CFP professionals. And I say that because that's, that's an, it's an important thing to know if you are going to be looking for somebody to do your financial planning. I'm very fortunate in that I've, I've, I've personally dealt with both of you in my life. So now, let's start grilling. <laughs> Why should we even have you Oaks around? Why should you? Yes. Jeremy, I think there's a couple of things. Yeah. First, let's let's. That talk was a very from, big sigh. <laughs> it's a very big question. <laughs> <laughs> it is an hour-long show, isn't it? No, no. Uh, Make your answer <laughs> half that. Let, 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 let me just, let's just start with the, the thing is, I think we're living in in, in very uh, interesting and difficult times from a financial perspective. Um, I think there's a lot out there that can confuse. Um, and bewilder a lot of clients, especially if they don't know a huge amount about financial planning, investing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think, on the broad base thing, advice is important. But to take it one step further, and I think perhaps more importantly on the subject is, why do you need a CFP professional? We're sitting in an environment now where there are over a hundred thousand registered representatives of the Financial Services Board. Okay, of that, only four thousand six hundred are CFP professionals, and. From a CFP professional point of view, my personal opinion is that anything less is you're probably not getting the type of advice that you need. And the reason I say that is it's just not a designation that we've, we've thought up or as the Financial Planning Institute have thought, well, let's put a couple of uh, sort of things together to, to guide us on what to do. It's an international designation. So as a CFP professional here in South Africa, we're part of a larger body which is in 40 other member countries where the standard, okay, when we talk about education, when we talk about experience, and we talk about ethics, is at a very, very high level, way above what the minimum requirements that are currently in legislation. So to my mind, the CFP professional, if you want to take your financial planning and your financial well-being seriously, you should be engaging with one. Paul, are people intimidated by you? I think so initially because of the lack of understanding what financial planning is all about. Yeah. I think you've got to make a clear distinction there, Jeremy. Um, there's financial advice and there's financial planning, and they're, they're quite wide apart. Okay, what's, what's the difference? Here? Well, if financial advice generally points to a specific product or investment in isolation, and we can dissect that and have a look at the merits of it, whether it you know, offers value, what returns one can get from it, but that's where it stays. Um, however, financial planning is a very holistic approach. We look at everything around the consumer in terms of financial, personal financial planning. In other words, we would look at where they are now relative to where they want to be and how to get to a financial objective down the road in terms of implementing the appropriate types of solutions, which often are not really product related. Uh, for example, you could very well end up realizing through that holistic approach that um, the opportunity lies in getting rid of your debt before we go to an investment strategy. So you see, you could actually miss the mark by just pure well, isolating your, your financial advice around one particular aspect. We would like to encourage people to look at it from a holistic point of view. Planning really involves everything. So it's a total approach versus an isolated one. But now, the, the, the argument that comes back time and time again when I'm in discussion about financial planners and financial planning is, yeah, but these guys are all linked to a company and all they're interested in doing is selling you a product from that company because they're getting the highest commission out of it. Mm. And it's all what's in it for you guys as opposed to me. How do you, how do you counter that argument? I, th I think there's a couple of things. Don't and, sigh and, and what we're seeing, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> saying up front. <laughs> One of the trends that we've seen globally and something that's fast becoming a reality here in South Africa mm. is, um, and legislation's definitely pointing towards us, is if you want to be a professional financial planner, you need to go towards a fee-based route. So what does a fee-based route means is that you're no longer 
depending on commission from any asset managers, product providers, life companies, etc., etc., your income is dependent on the fee that you're then charging your client. And in that way, who becomes more important, the product provider or the client? Absolutely the client. That would be a lot more transparent, wouldn't it? I think so, yes. And, uh, but at the same time, let me just defend a, a lot of the advice in our industry is good and it is appropriate. Um, but when you take it to the level of financial planning, you've got to understand that there's a lot wider sort of scope in terms of the solutions that you might end up taking up. But uh, well, hang on, well, before you carry on, mm -hmm. I, I, I can see where you're going with this, but mm -hmm. having said it would be a lot more transparent, it would become a, a bit of a grudge payment if, if you turned around to me and said, yes, I'll, certainly I'll, I'll handle your financial planning. It'll cost you, I don't know, mm -hmm. what would you, you would charge per hour, probably about 100,000 Rand. Well, I'll discount no, for knowing yourself, your lifestyle and the way you've got to finance it and all the rest of it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but it would be a grudge yes. payment, wouldn't it? Well, look, again, grudge payment, I think in, in terms of pricing, um, it's always a perception of value. And when you go through the financial planning process, quite clearly you will see a value proposition at the end, which will be determined by the appropriateness of the solution. Um, quite often we get trapped up in chasing returns and that seems to be the sort of focal point of any review or any person's need to have some sort of financial planning. That what return can I get? But when you go through the holistic approach, the transparent approach, and you arrive at a, s and a solution that perhaps wasn't even considered or thought of, i.e. the debt consolidation that was the more appropriate solution, um, you can see the value out of that. You can see from a certified financial planner too that the, um, the objective is not to sell product. It's out there to help p people solve their problems, their financial problems, and make their money work in the appropriate direction. Fees don't become an issue after that. But, okay, I don't want to get stuck on the fees thing, but mm. you guys are, are, are in a fairly invidious position um, because you turn around and say to me, um, okay, I think you should take a certain amount of your money and put it into this fund. Uh, at the end of year two, I'm looking at that fund and going, I've lost 4%. Where you in the first place said, this is a 10 year thing, huh. don't w worry about it. In the but I'm still going, but I lost that 4 where's that 4% gone? And I start worrying and going, should I even listen to this guy? Huh. Huh. Or should I be talking to somebody else? How do you deal with that? Jeremy, I, th I think there's two elements there's that I'd like to There's another side coming there, no. you see. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first thing I want to deal with is, if somebody's value proposition is that they'll be able to choose the best or right fund for you, then you probably should be walking out the door. Okay, there's over 950 unit trust funds out there. As I sit here today, if I applied all of my time, energy and resources purely into looking into those funds, I would never ever get to the point of understanding which would be the best or most appropriate. At the end of the day, when we look at it, we have to say, what is the strategy or how hard is it that your money needs to work for you, number one, and that, that's an answer that most people don't have at this stage. So they're kind of, I've got this money and I, I, I kind of want to retire or I, I kind of want to do this in 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years time. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to bridge that gap. So the first thing that we look at is a return objective. Okay, so that's the first value proposition. The second one is to say, from an asset allocation point of view, okay, mm -hmm. because when we're looking at driving certain returns, 94% of what determines that return comes down to asset allocation, not necessarily a fund. We then need to develop that asset allocation. That becomes incredibly important. Once we understand that, we need to know how that is going to behave over time, even over a one year period. And so, a large amount of, of the coaching that goes into it on an initial basis and an ongoing basis is to say, has the fund gone down, as an example? Yes, it has. Is it in line with what our expectations are? Yes, it is. Okay, so do we stick to our guns on this one? Yes, we do. To try and have a situation of saying, let's jump around and try and get the right funds, I, I think that's, that's, uh, that's going to pose huge problems. Yeah, Sean's raised, uh, brought a word into this conversation, mm -hmm. coaching. Yeah, sure. 
How important is that from your point of view when you're sitting down with a me? Well, I think that Sean highlights the point. Um, we, we have a challenge as a financial planner to manage the expectations of our clients. Mm -hmm. I think what happens is clients have an expectation that they've got to get into a fund that performs the best. And that might, again, coming back to the financial advice, look, looking at it in isolation, that will be the focal point, returns. Um, but the financial plan speaks to a broader objective. It speaks to your financial independence over time, uh, at a certain point in time. And uh, if we can manage the expectations by coaching you and understanding how certain assets work in certain cycles and how they are situational and how they appeal or are more appropriate to different people at different stages in their lives and you get to understand that a lot better that's where the coaching comes in mm -hmm. so then when there is a market crash, crash or a correction in the market or something in terms of valuation is adjusted on your portfolio you're not surprised you understand the nature of that particular strategy hence we always try and help people understand that it's time over money or money over time um, and we get this horizon clearly established we get our clients to be involved as much as they care to in terms of realizing how the asset allocation will work over time, how it responds to market conditions. But then again, it comes to another point. All these are technical terms which rely on us as financial planners to explain in very simple language mm. to get that understanding. Mm. And that depends on the inclination of the clients. You know, people can only go so far, only want to go so far. And we'll take them to the level, but always on the, the move to try and get them involved in trying to be involved with their planning by understanding it a little bit better, not just really abdicating it to the financial advisor and then on a review, be surprised. And coming back to your question about coaching, that's really where it is. It's an education process more than anything else. You see, to me, what, what you two are saying here, the, you, sh you should be changing your title to financial therapists or something <laughs> who, who sit people down on a couch and go, how are you feeling? Where do you want your money to go? What do you want it to do for you? That's the sense that I get. Absolutely, Jeremy. I think uh, that the risk there is if you look at most people, they're not willing to talk, to their, talk, talk about their money even to their closest friends or family. Mm. Uh, never mind a so-called financial therapist, uh, so to speak. But, but certainly, I, I think, and, and specifically from, from a personal point of view, I believe the role of coaching and guidance is critically important. And I think that the industry for, for far too long, and, and continues today, to try and keep as much information close to their, test, uh, to, to their chest so they can purport to be the experts, that mm. you have to come to them if you want to understand. And to my mind, I, I have a very open relationship with my clients where we discuss the various things. And, and, and by the time we get to the end of the plan, um, they have been as involved uh, in the development of it as I have. So I tick a lot of the technical boxes. And then from a variable number of, of financial decisions, we start to mold and understand what's best for the client. So when they walk out, they understand exactly where, how, and why we're investing their money and potentially taking on any uh, risk management. We're talking about financial therapy this time around. Going to a short commercial break. More Mansfield's Money Sense when we come back.